Hello and welcome to this week's video. This week I'm taking a look at some of my Sarissa buildings. Now I've started these quite some time ago, a lot of them are fairly basic. But what I want to look at specifically are some of the things that I do to personalise them and make them look more battle ready. I mean, obviously all the kits come as plain MDF, so you have to first of all give them a basic paint job. On this one I've gone for a white with green doors. And then what I've done is I've added a little bit of weathering effect to the to the white walls and the and the shutters. But one of the uh, major uh, things that I want to look at is what I actually do to the insides of the buildings. Because the thing that bothers me most when I've built them is that they look very sterile, you know, empty buildings. They don't look at all lived in. So that's basically what I want to look at in this video. So taking a look at this first one, on the top floor, I've made up from some spares, um, some push-out parts, a bed, and uh, obviously some rubble to the floor, and um, you know, wash against the windows, and I've got some brick dust effect on the mattress. Now the mattress, I've made that from the. Uh, milliput um, which I've uh, then shaped roughly to the size of a mattress for the bed and then put little holes in it to make it look like the button marks on the mattress and then formed it into a shape that looks like it's just been dragged off the bed um, and the idea of having some of these bits in there I mean these are the kind of things if the soldiers went into a building they'd utilize whatever they could find to put up against the windows you know, to just to form a little bit more cover. And then I've added in a few places some rubble, you know, to show the bricks having come down. Nothing too much, just, just enough to suggest that something's happened, that people will live in there, and uh, it's real battle. Now downstairs, again, I've gone for a very similar look on the bottom, but this time... I've used the milliput to make a small sofa. Now, I don't worry too much about the sofas and things like that that I make because ultimately I'm wanting it to look damaged and I'm going to put rubble over it and things like that. So, to be honest, you just got to go for the shape that you think looks right. And if it doesn't come out exactly as you want, well, it's just damaged. <laughs> And again, I've I've gone for some more rubble and I've made up a little chair out of some of the little press-out parts from the windows. And then I've used some uh, coffee stirrers for broken planks, which I've laid across the bricks. And then there at the end there, you can see that I've made a little bit of a cupboard that's also badly damaged. And next to that is a tyre. Um, basically, I went to a car boot once and I bought a selection of scrap models and I utilised any little bits that I thought I could use for modelling. And you, you often see the tyres in, uh, you know, barricades and stuff like that. So I thought, well, I'll add one to this where someone's tried to make a bit of cover out the corner of the building. So that's that's just a, a again it's this cupboard it's just bits of wood that are left over from making up the kit. So it's nothing special. And the fact that it wants to look damaged it doesn't matter, you know, if if you can't make it exactly look right. So that's that's what I tend to go for in these bomb damaged buildings. Because I, I want them to look like there was life going on in there. And then something bad's happened. There's been a bombing. And and then it's been utilised by soldiers on the battlefield. So you, you see all the mud and the debris run into the house. 
Uh, it just gives it an overall realistic effect to the uh, to the building. The um, tiles on this one um, are what come on the kit. So I've not actually used any of the cardboard tiles that you can get from Sarissa. On this next one, I've done very similar effects. Um, a whitewash to the outside, weathered it, you know, to give it a bit more of a run-down look. But in this one... I'm actually using, I think that one's a proper foreground bed kit. And then again, I've used the Milliput for the mattress. And uh, then I've also gone for some spare windows that I had. And I've just broken one of those. And uh, piled that down to make it look like it's fell out through this gap. And then uh, on the other side of the room... I've got an upturned wardrobe, which again, I've just built out of some spare bits from the kit itself. And I think I've made up perhaps the doors from some uh, balsa wood. But, it, you know, you just got to get the shape roughly right because you are going to scatter uh, debris and grit on it. And it's going to look damaged. So you don't have to worry about it too much. But it really does give it that feel that it's a real house. And again, downstairs, I've similar thing. I've got a little unit. And then I've used some little bits of wood to make a crucifix to put on the wall. You've got uh, the table and chairs cast to one side that have been turned over. I do again. I do that from all the spare bits that you push out the windows and things like that. So any of them little bits, I always keep them because there's always something else you can use it for. And then to give it that weathered look, I've obviously spilt um, some uh, washes and things like that, and added a bit of grit while it was still wet. Another effect that I've gone for on this one, if you can, you can probably make it out better from this angle is this paper. Now, what, I've, what I'm suggesting there is it, it's some kind of rag or maybe even a dis, uh, you know, one of the curtains that's come down from the window or something like that, and it's just been trodden into all the grit and debris. Um, and I use that effect quite a bit. You can see all the little bits of paper there that I've done, just just, again, to give it a feel that there was life in there once, and it was a real house. The um, the roofs on these uh, buildings are pretty good. Um, but this one, as you can see, I've uh, supplemented it by putting a few cardboard tiles, you know, where the others have all fell off and I've even dropped some inside into the bedroom below. Um, and as I say, the, these roofs are pretty good on these these builds. But there is always that option. I mean, Sarissa do lots of tile roo tiling that you can add to roofs, cardboard strips. And this one, again, all very similar kind of work I've put some different things in this one and the the bed itself is broken this time and spread across again the mattress has been pulled over the top and you've got some broken floorboards and bricks it it's all very similar ideas but it's utilizing things that we, you would normally throw away so it it's definitely worth you know looking at adding all kinds of uh, things to the house anything that you can imagine really and you think you can build it, it's worth putting it in there on this one look i've just got a basic table and then i've gone with the uh, rag things on the floor again and it's just it's just a way of bringing the the buildings to life on the battlefield 
And there's plenty of room still for positioning your men. But it, it does give it a lot more realistic feel when you're placing the men in a, in a building that's not just bland and empty. I mean, on the outside here, sometimes I'll, I'll actually photograph a, an old war poster or something like that or get something from the internet that I can shrink down, print, and then I'll I'll stick it to the side like like you'd see posters on the end of a building. And uh, you can stain them with tea, tea bags and things like that to give them a, an aged look. And then you can use washes on them and all kinds of things. But having a few posters on the outside of a building and making it so it's specific to the environment, you know, like if it's in Holland, you want the Dutch ones and German for German ones. And, and you know, basically try and create the atmosphere of the battlefield that you're going to use it in. So that's that's another thought that I use for the outsides of these buildings. And then on the side here as well, I'll I I'll often uh, paint running water coming down it or you know graffiti even. You I mean you, you can use a pen to write uh you know draw a little bit of graffiti if you're careful with it. And then just breaking up some of the blinds on the front as well. You know, where they've been blown out through the window. It all just makes it feel a bit more real. Right, if we uh, take a look at the next building. This one, as you can see, I've not done very much to this one. I have put a thin layer of uh, plaster on the outside of it I've stuck with a basic roof pattern you know I could probably spruce it up by putting the uh, Sarissa tie cardboard tiles on there but uh, the shutters definitely need some attention on this one but I've obviously built it and then then moved on now looking around the front this, this is one of the main things that I've done to this one is I've looked at making interchangeable shop front labels. And what I've done is I've actually printed the uh, label and then stuck it to a little magnetic strip. And then underneath that, I've put a small thin strip of metal that I cut out with a Dremel. So then I can just place the right kind of label for the right kind of battle. Again, very much like the posters, if it's in this one's Dutch. But I could always take that off and I could put a German one on or a British one. I mean, you know, it just lets you, you know, have a bit more flexibility and you can change the look of a building. I've not really finished this one off very well it was just I was working on a prototype of the idea but I probably will go back to it and make more of an effort in the actual sign printout you know so it actually looks more like sign writing but uh, as I say I was just working out the ideas and that's you know it's just worth you know thinking things through try, trial and error really but I will go back to that and I'll finish it off Right, this one, I'm not at all happy with the paint job that I've done on this. It's, uh, I wanted, you know, a couple of real archetypal Dutch buildings to, for my uh, market garden battlefields. Um, but I, I don't know what possessed me on the colouring on this one, I really don't. I think I'll definitely be giving this a whole new paint job. And I'll be looking at putting some of the uh, Sarissa cardboard strip tiles on there to make it look more real as well one thing i've done on the inside of this one though because it's got uh divided rooms is i've actually painted the rooms in different colors and then i've also matched the internal walls of these pieces 
to match those rooms. So it just, uh, you know, it it gives it a feel that, again, it, that it's lived in. It's diff each room's slightly different. I mean, there's more I could do with that, but it's just fairly basic. And then uh, going back to the top one, I've actually used again some of the uh, coffee stirrers, which I've scratched and scraped and then cut to make it look like old floorboards and just give it a bit of a stain over the top. But it, it all adds to the effect. So it, it's certainly worth going that extra mile. I've actually got uh, another one of these buildings. I've got the uh, three-storey one, so we'll we'll take a bit of a look at that one next. Right, this is a three-storey building. Again, it's got a fairly basic roof, and I've done a very very basic paint job on this one, so it is definitely one I will be coming back to. But then again, I, I, I never really call any of these done. I will go back and revisit them. And anything that I don't think works, I'll re-look at. You know, perhaps change the blinds on this one. Um, again, maybe add a different roof to it. To hide all these little peg marks where, where the roof clips together. But then again, inside, I've gone for a, another little technique. And that is to print out or cut out wallpapers um, that I can use for flooring. Like that one looks very much like a tile flooring. And, uh, you know, if you, if you look around, there's plenty of different patterns that you can use. And if you're not happy with them, you can, you can just look for something to photograph and then reduce it. The next floor had gone for a green carpet and then a red carpet on the other floor. But it's just another effect, you know, sometimes, sometimes I've gone for floorboards, sometimes I've gone for the carpet. Because this one's not bomb damaged, it made more sense to have a, a finished, good looking floor in it. But, uh, I mean, the beauty of this, this um, kit is, you know, you could buy two of these and you, you've got the option then of having a, a two storey building. Or if with the multiple kits, you could add uh, several floors and have even a four floor building. So that that's the flexibility of these kits. In fact, I think you can actually buy floors for some of their buildings so you can add to them. But uh, I've just gone on this one with a three because I've already got the two building, two floor building. So I was quite happy with the way with the way this one was but again i just need to look at this paint job because it's very very plain at the minute so i will be going back to that this is another one of my uh, dutch buildings with the barn style roof uh, again i've done a fairly basic paint job on this i, I certainly will be going back to it I'm fairly happy with the roof, so I'm not sure whether I'd go on to put tiles on that or not. But uh, I've added some washes to it just to, you know, give it a bit of an age look. But then inside, if I look at my top floor, I've gone for the uh, coffee stirrer floorboard technique again with a really walnut coloured stain. And then I've reutilised the tile paper that you saw earlier um, and put use that for the base of the building. I haven't gone as far as putting any furniture in this one, but uh, I've, as I say, I will go back to it like I have on a lot of these buildings. Just before I bring on this next building... Uh, I will warn you that I have actually used some swastikas on this. So if that's something that you're offended by, um, you know, please do just feel free to skip past this 
building. For me, obviously, it goes without saying, I in no way endorse um, the, the Nazi ideology or ideology or anything else like it. Um, certainly not. It's just basically I'm going for a kind of a cinematic finish to the building and I wanted like a German headquarters and that's that's why I've gone for this level of realism. But I I do appreciate that, you know, a lot of people feel even in a game, even though it's Second World War, there's still no place for these emblems. So, you know, all I can say is if I felt that, you know, anyone was going to be upset by it, I wouldn't use it. But this is just for my my use and I'm going to use it for things you know, like some of the story-based missions, like, you know, maybe you've got to capture a German officer who's got plans for some particular battle or something like that. And I've made the flags that hang out the window removable. So, you know, I can use it with or without. And what I've done is I've just mounted the flag on some cardboard and then fashioned a couple of hooks so I can hang it in the window. And it, like I say, it's just basically I'm trying to reflect the classic war movies that I watched when I was growing up. It's got absolutely nothing to do with National Socialism or anything else, which is completely abhorrent. But it's, I know it's a sensitive area and a lot of people, you know, consider it an absolute no-no. So, you know, please don't be offended. It is just something I've done purely for the aesthetics of the building. Um, and it's certainly not meant to give any offence. And, uh, you know, I just can't emphasise it enough. I just thought it was a very good building to use for, a, for an headquarters. Inside, I've gone for a slightly different finish on this. Rather than the uh, coffee stirrers, I've used a printed uh, floorboard picture that I've reduced to the right size and then stuck down as the ground floor. And then on the uh, bottom floor, I've gone for a different tile type pattern and stuck that in there for the bottom. And then inside, I've also used some uh, photographs of posters that I've miniaturized and then uh, aged, and I've put them on a little bit of balsa wood to mount them on the wall. So, just to give it that that feeling that it it is a real office, and it's it's obviously you know the headquarters for the German units. And again, another one at the other end. And they, they are actual posters from the time. Again, not everybody's cup of tea, I know. Um, I just wanted to give it a cinematic feel. That That's purely why I've gone for that. But the actual build, building itself uh, by Sarissa, you know, regardless of what you want to use it for, it, it really is a nice building that Sarissa have made. I mean, this... Uh, they do this uh, French chateau in a variety of sizes and they've also done it as a bomb damaged version but uh, I, do, I, want, I thought it was such a nice looking building I, I wanted it to be the complete one but um, again I'm, I'm sorry if you know if anybody is offended by it it really isn't my intention and then the final one that I'm looking at is just a little watchtower, which, you know, it's not an house or anything, but I decided to go with this because I will be looking at the um, uh, Son Bridge scenario in the uh, Market Garden book, and it mentions a watchtower, so I went with this one. And I've just tried to age the, and stain the wood as appropriate. And... Uh, I've also gone for the poster trick again on the front and put like a German notice 
board on the front and weathered it and make it look like it's been there for quite a while and then added bits of uh, greenery and moss around that's growing on the on the framework and I've used a bit of uh, dry tea in the bottom as well to for the soil stroke debris just so it blends in well with the map this takes me on to my largest building the uh, Sarissa Church I'm sorry it's not, you know, all showing up. I am quite close in on this one. But I want to show you some of the things I've done to personalise it. Now, at my local church, I love the windows. And uh, I took some photographs of them. And uh, around about the same time, I started putting this building together. And I thought it'd be a good idea to actually have some of those window patterns in this church. So what I did is I printed it out on some acetate sheet and then, you know, sized them and then cut them to appear like bits of broken glass window. And I just, you know, it just gave it that, you know, church feel and it brought it to life. I, the bare windows just didn't seem to do it for me. So I thought if I could put some suitable stained glass window fragments in. it just give it that little bit more character. I'm hoping you can see it in this light. I've obviously used different parts of the photographs for different windows and tried to make it match the actual shape of the window and the kind of, the kind of uh, pattern that you'd expect to see. And I've also done that with the main body of the church as well. And I'll try and show you those. And you can see the actual windows through the other side even better than you can this side. Because the light's behind it. But I've actually done that for every single window around the building. And even the little round windows and arch windows above the door. I've got a little bits of uh, stained glass in. And then turning it round to the side, I've uh, got some greenery growing up here. Because I wanted it to look a little bit aged as well. Like, you know, it matches in with the damage that's been done to it and the I've tried to put an element of green wash on there to make it look like there's kind of uh, moss growing up the walls a bit. I have gone for a fairly basic colour, uh, a grey finish. I probably could have used a little bit more imagination on that, but I think it it fits the purpose. I mean, it's such a stunning building. It certainly gives a really good centre to a battle table. Right, I'll take a look inside. And I can show you some of the things that I've added to bring it to life. Now this, uh, well you can see the windows a lot better with this view actually. And I've put some, uh, that was a little uh, Bible on the lectern. And then I've got uh, the pulpit. The altar table. At the top and I've also put a small carpet leading up to it and a little mini bible on the altar and then in this back end you can see that I've got some uh, pews as well and a little font I think a lot of these church parts I actually got from foreground i think pretty sure most of them came from them um some of the pots probably didn't um and then i've used the papers as well that i've used in some of the other buildings i've got block wood one there i've gone for that tile one again for, for the uh area around the uh, altar 
block again. And then I've done some uh, flag paving for the main body of the church. Which I don't know whether you can see, but I've even put uh, some pictures of, you know, the inlaid gravestones that you get on the church. It's uh, it's it, it's brought it to life. I, I think there's there's more I could have done, but these were just some of the basic ideas that I had. You know. You you could take these ideas and and run with your own or personalize it to something you've seen. I think if I was to revisit this church, I'd probably do a bit more work on the outside though. Um, I'm sure I could have done a bit more to it and as for the roof the uh the tiles they're pretty good on this building i wouldn't necessarily go with any of the uh, cardboard replacement tiles if if i did i'd perhaps add some spare you know singular ones further out onto the roof and perhaps scatter a few inside the church but by and large, I'm fairly happy with the roof itself. So I I haven't, uh, other than painting it, aging it, and putting a little bit of like uh, green moss colour to it, I've pretty much left it as is. Right, what I'll do now is I'll put up the photo gallery so you can have a closer look at some of these. I really do hope that you found something of interest in my video. And that it's given you some ideas that you could perhaps carry over into your own building. And if you have any ideas of your own or techniques that you want to share, why not drop them down in the comments? Because I'm sure we'd all be interested in finding new and interesting ways to decorate our buildings and terrain to bring our bolt action tables to life. And as you can see from mine, I, I'm no professional painter or anything. I've just applied techniques that I've developed over time. And and as I've said, on some of these buildings, I'll probably revisit them and, you know, have another look at the paintwork and the finish. But just adding little things, you know, like some of the techniques I've, I've shown, it just really brings it all to life. I mean, e even if it's just to pick a few pieces out of the blinds, it just, it makes it look more lived in. You know, little things like that. And I think, you know, the more you can add to a building, the more it'll help to bring the battlefield to life. If you've enjoyed this week's video, you may want to join me next week when I take a look at some of the other buildings that I have in my collection that are not by Sarissa. If there's anything you'd like to ask about this week's video, or if you want to share any ideas of your own, why not drop a comment I do reply to everyone I receive. If you are liking my videos, please consider giving me a thumbs up or even subscribing so you can get my future videos. Or why not join me over at my Facebook page, which is called Bolt Action Figures and Terrain Modelling. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.